Hey guys, welcome to Legit Street Cars and welcome to a very special video. Today I'm buying a car that heavily influenced who I am today as a car guy. This is a car that I used to walk by almost every single day as a kid and it was the inspiration for me buying my ultimate dream car at the time, an LS1 WS6 Trans Am that I still own. Here it is, a 1996 LT1 Trans Am and if you guys didn't see the first wash video that I made on this, I'll link it down below, but let's just say this car didn't exactly look like this about a week ago. And if you guys were around for that video, then you already know the man, the myth, the legend. This is Mel. He owns this car. He's owned it for about 25 years. And Mel, I got to say, I'm pretty happy to uh, take ownership of it today. All right. Take right. care of it, man. I, I just haven't driven it for a while, so I don't know what's the condition now, you know? Well, we're going to find out. I, I think it's going to be pretty rough, quite oh, honestly. Oh, yeah, I think so. But we made a deal, 1500 bucks. It's all there. All right, bud. And Mel saw me filling up the tires with this portable inflator from Fantix. So he said I had to all work right. that into the deal. So there you go. It's <laughs> brand new. And I think we're going to have to use that again. Yeah, I actually used yeah. it to fill up these tires in the last video, but it's been a week and they are leaking pretty bad. So we got to fill these up before we attempt to push this car over there. So this is the X8 Apex from Fantic and I keep one of these in almost all of my cars because it is a very, very powerful portable tire inflator and it will even inflate tires that are completely flat like this one. So while that's filling up, I'm just kind of taking a better look at this car. It was raining and really cold the day that I washed it and and unfortunately does have a decent amount of rust here. We're already at 24 PSI. It only used one bar and it wasn't even really fully charged. This thing had been sitting in my car for at least a couple of months. And there's more on this side as well. There's definitely been some work done to this car, that's for sure. And there we go. This tire is at 35 PSI from a portable tire inflator. Pretty cool. And we're done with the rear as well. Perfect. So this thing's really cool. You can go up or down with the pressure all the way to 150 PSI and you can switch it to bar as well and it'll do cars, it'll do mopeds and motorcycles, bicycles, balls, and they have different fittings that come with the kit. If you guys want to pick up your very own X8 Apex tire inflator, I'll leave you a special Amazon link down below that'll get you $20 off and I'm going to leave you a coupon code down there that will get you an additional $15 off, but this special is for a limited time. So act quickly but you guys are gonna love this thing I have them in the trunk of a few of my cars it can get you out of a bind and it'll charge up all your devices as well it's a phenomenal deal and a great Christmas present so check it out with that let's get to pushing it is freezing so I want to get this done as quick as possible all right guys it's actually the next day he couldn't find the key and we couldn't get this door open and I got it open right away this morning I had to lift up on the hinge it's kind of hitting the body right there so Mel is at work. I'm over here just getting everything out of the car. He wants me to leave it all for him. So we'll see what's in this interior. I can tell you right now, it smells really, really bad. These T-tops have probably been leaking for the better part of a decade while it sits here. I gotta say, this is pretty nasty, guys. Not gonna lie. Ugh, there's nothing left of this seat. Ugh, this is horrible. This stuff is nasty. Oh, geez. All right, cover's coming off. This little pad is actually frozen, so it soaked up some water and it's so cold outside. It's like a board. So this seat isn't in the best of condition either, but Mel just asked me to take anything out of here that says and leave it outside for him, so that's what we'll do. We'll check out this. Okay, all right. Yep, that's probably why this thing reeks as well. Oh guys, this sucks. This sucks. Oh, this is just disgusting. These animals just destroyed the owner's manual. Look at, I'm just, I can't do this right now. That's nasty. Ugh. All right, let's see. What do we got? No chance these shocks hold this thing up. Maybe this was here for a reason. And looks like we got another T-top and a radio. And a bunch of tools. At least there's no dead animals back here. All right, so we can't shift out of park unless this thing has some juice. So this battery is obviously dead, but we can force some power to it with the jumper. Huh. And it's still got no juice in here. Oh, there we go, there we go. Oh, I just, oh, it's not shifting out. Come on. This thing is stuck. We're hitting the brake and it still won't come out of gear. 
All right, this is not working out. Luckily, these 90s GM cars were basically put together with just a couple of clips. <laughs> and we should be able to at least see the shifter here. Let's see if we can manually do this. I was able to push the lock in and we should be in neutral now. It's hard to see, but there is the mechanism that unlocks when you hit the brake and it's activated by the stop lamp switch. Uh, apparently it's not working though in our case, but I was able to just kind of push it back and then move the shifter to neutral. All right, we gave it some power. It's clicking. The passenger side works, driver's side does not. Typical F-body. All right, we got the car in neutral. We have air in all four tires. I topped them all up. We got our muscle. We're gonna try and push it. All right, we're gonna find out if these brakes are locked up. Hey, it's not bad. I was expecting the brakes to be locked up. Okay, let's do this. This window is killing me. I think the bushes have grown ever since this thing was left here. So we're gonna run into that bush, but it is what it is. All right, it's all downhill from here. <laughs> All right, we got it out of the backyard and into the driveway. It rolls fairly easy and I'm really close. My house is really close. So we might end up just pushing this home. All right, we're going for it. We pushed it out into the street. So me and a friend of mine and his four-year-old are going to push this to my house. It's rolling way too easy. I don't think we need to complicate things really at all. And no one's around right now. Everybody's at work. So this should work out. All right, here we go. I'm following. It wasn't too long ago I was doing this with a white E30 BMW and it worked out well. Okay. All right, we're almost there. We've gone three quarters of a block. <laughs> I gotta say I'm pretty tired. Oh, I'm out of shape. But we're almost at the original legit three quarters where I'm starting to think I'm gonna try and get it running there instead of messing around towing this thing all the way to my shop. Okay. Just gotta catch my breath. All right, we're almost here recruited one of my neighbors to help and I backed the wagon out. It's right over there. So we're going right in the garage. Gotta get some momentum going. You got this, Jimmy? Yeah. All right. Let's go, let's go. Watch the door though. And the window doesn't work, which is a pain. All right, we did it. We got the LT1 Trans Am in my garage. It's reserved. 1996 Pontiac Trans Am parking only now. <laughs> oh man, we got it and God, I'm already noticing a lot of stuff. Aside from the interior, this thing is rough. This is very rough. I'm starting to think this is probably one of the worst condition cars I've ever bought, especially compared to how it looks at a glance. So from far away, if you go like that and cover up the rust, this car looks okay, but I have a feeling once we lift it, it's, it's not gonna be okay. All right guys, it's a few days later and I actually had to push the car back outside and leave it sit in the driveway because as soon as I went back in the garage, there was a mouse running across my floor. I've never had mice in here and this thing brought them and I didn't want it to infest the garage and my other cars that I keep in here. So I sprayed the car with this. Apparently mice don't like peppermint. So the car was sitting outside. I sprayed the interior. I sprayed everything hoping that this would make the mice kind of scamper away. And I left it out there for a few days just to make sure that all the mice were gone and now it's back in the garage. And I've already lifted the car and taken a look. I'll show you here in a minute, but it's a goner. It's pretty much a goner, honestly. Just, yeah, let's just lift it up. Okay, so I saw a lot of this stuff here and it definitely wasn't a good sign. It looks like this has been filled and there's a crack right there. We have rust bubbling up, um, but overall, it looks like pretty much every part of this car has been hit. So this is cracked right here, but the fender and bumper are pushed in right there. This rocker is falling apart as we speak. And I think this has been filled also. We have rust there on the quarter panel. And then you get underneath and you start seeing stuff like this, a hose clamp holding up the exhaust, the car being abandoned for so long. And it's all just coming together right now. I wasn't expecting too much, honestly, but this is what we're dealing with on this 1996 TA. 
the floors are pretty much gone. So this is obviously a unibody car. This is your frame rail right here. It goes into the floor and there's basically no structure there. All of this is very, very weak. We could probably punch right through it. This section of floor is gone. All the lines, the brake and the fuel lines need to be replaced. Uh, there are holes here, that is carpet. Doesn't get any better on the passenger side. This is all just completely rotted and the exhaust is as well. The control arms, all of the suspension is just one big glob of rust. Here's the back passenger frame rail. It goes into this now, carpet basically. And we have stuff like this. This car is just basically rotted out and there's a lot of filler as well. And this is the trunk pan. You can see the carpeting and light through here. So this is a goner. Uh, essentially, the entire floor of the Trans Am is just completely wiped out. Just everything would need to be replaced, which on a car like this means you're just getting a donor car and swapping the drivetrain. If you guys were ever curious on a worst case scenario for a rust belt car, this is it. This is it. Even the rear end housing has very, very thick rust. Usually this is just surface rust, but you could probably still use this, but the spring perches are definitely weak. Everything has been weakened. You'd essentially need to replace really every single part on this car to make it a car again. This is dangerous. This car can't really be driven. And at this point, it's only worth what it has left in good parts, which hopefully we have a good engine and transmission. Outside of that, it's just a few body parts that would be good. So this is a great part out type of vehicle. Um, I don't think that Mel you know, knew about any of this. He wasn't the guy that worked on this car or anything, but he let it go uh, for whatever reason. And this is what it turned into. And uh, it is what it is. You win some, you lose some. You guys always say I get lucky with really good deals on cars like my $900 E39. That was a great deal, but you take chances. You buy something like this and it's a total basket case. But not all is lost because since I made the car wash video on the TA, I got an email from, I think it was a 17 year old that lives about an hour from here who has an LT1 formula and he blew up his engine. So he was asking me if I had any leads on an engine or any advice and stuff like that. It doesn't sound like he really has much money to rebuild his engine or the know-how. Uh, so I'm hoping, I'm crossing my fingers that this engine is good because if it is, I'm going to surprise him with the entire car so he can take whatever parts he needs from it, including the engine, and at least this car that inspired my love of the F bodies, the Camaros and the Trans Ams, uh, will kind of complete its life cycle and help out another young person that is an enthusiast and that's passionate about these cars. So crossing my fingers here, let's get right into the engine and see if we can get this guy started. Okay, so if you guys were here for the wash video, Mel said that he spent $5,000 to replace this LT1 engine. I don't know how long ago or how many miles ago, but that's what he said. I don't think it was all that recent, but it should be recent enough that this engine still works properly. At least that's what I hope. So I do want to spin the crank over to make sure it's not frozen, but first we got to pull some plugs. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a good fender still. I want to leave it that way, but this door, the hinges are, are shot. The hood opens. Hopefully an animal doesn't jump out at me. I mean, we blew all of this off in the wash video. Like this was not there and now it's here again, which makes me think that the animals were trying to reclaim this car after we cleaned it. <laughs> I did this a few days ago, but I'm gonna go ahead and spray this engine again, just in case there's animals that wanna jump out at me. They will be discouraged. And this stuff smells seriously great. Like I just wanna spray it around any garage I work at because it's awesome. Doesn't smell like a garage anymore. It smells like your house after your wife just got home from Whole Foods with like 10 little bottles of essential oils. It smells pretty good. I gotta say, knowing how many mice lived in this car, still thinking about a mouse just running up onto my arm right now. They're usually nice little critters. Ugh, they just chew wiring harnesses. They mean no harm. All right, I gotta wire off you LT1 guys. You got it tough with these spark plugs, let me tell you. I've been working on LS engines for a long time and those are absolutely nothing compared to what you guys have to go through. And I got like the easiest one too. There, there we go. That's a good sign. That plug's not frozen in the block. All right, so first spark plug out of the LT1 engine and it looks promising. It looks pretty good. It wasn't rusted solid in the block. There's nothing broken on it. It's a little dirty, but to be expected, I like it. Next up, we have to boroscope that cylinder. I wanna make sure it's not rusty. All right, here we go. Welcome to the inside of our 96 Trans Am engine. Right off the bat, it looks good. We have some cross hatching on the cylinder walls, 
phenomenal. Okay, then we can start to see the valve reliefs on the piston. A little bit of carbon buildup, but nothing bad. Yeah, so this piston overall is looking nice. It's looking really good. The cylinder looks really clean. I'm liking this, this is very promising. Let's pull another plug. Since we have that plug out, I'm gonna go ahead and fog the engine, although I don't think we need to do this. Uh, it's one of those why not type of deals. If we're gonna be pulling plugs, we might as well fog these out. All right, cool. We got a mouse, it's right here, it's right here. Right there, right there, ah. Oh. No, no. Oh. All right, there's a mouse. I didn't get them all out, this is crazy. He had to have gone back to his home. He just ran under the car. Unbelievable. Trans Am is killing me over here, guys. Oh, I pushed this thing down the street into my garage and now I'm like ruining my home garage. Awesome, if you guys have experience with mice in the garage, give me some advice because I don't yet. Once I get this TA out of here, how am I gonna get the mice out of my garage? All right, I'm pulling this plug out and it's been kind of a big pain. The socket wouldn't fit over it nicely. Let's see what we got. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so this one is totally cracked. I'll have to get a new one. AC Delco plugs though, and they are fairly newer. So maybe it does have a new engine, who knows? We can see there where the rings were sitting. So maybe at some point after a few years, he tried to crank it over, bump the starter a little bit. And what happens is the steel rings will fuse themselves to the block, especially on an iron block and the rings will get stuck there and you can free them up. But if you don't spray anything in there, that'll break up the rust and you just go ahead and try and crank the engine, you can snap the rings right off. Very important to check out the cylinders on one of these abandoned type of cars, but let's take a look at this piston and pretty normal carbon buildup. So it's definitely not a brand new engine, that's for sure. But you know, it could have you know, 20, 30,000 miles and look like this. I don't think we're really gonna get much information out of Mel. He just said it was it was many years ago, but it was $5,000, so I don't know. And also LT1 guys, are these the stock pistons? I'm gonna assume that they are. The rest of this engine looks stock, but valve reliefs look good. Everything looks great. All right, so I found an extra plug. It's got a little crack in the porcelain, but uh, I think it'll work just fine for what we're trying to do, which is just here and see if this engine's any good. And uh, this is a TR6. This is a colder plug that a lot of guys run when they're running booster nitrous so it doesn't detonate. And that's what this totally stock LT is getting. Yeah, so we had mice living right on top of the control arm. That was like their summer home. And then they would escape for the winter inside one of the many holes in the floor, probably that one, and hang out in the glove box. The glove box seemed to be their year round home. Yeah, this thing is shot, guys. It's such a shame. I have a feeling we're gonna see another mouse by the end of this video. Hopefully it's just not one that's running up my arm into my face, that would kind of suck. Uh, but right now, we are under the car again. I'm weary of the mice falling on my head too. There's a nice little mouse home right there also. But we are here for this. We need to turn the crankshaft by hand very gently, make sure this engine is gonna turn. And luckily on the LT, we have a ton of room to do so. And here is the notorious OptiSpark. So these go out all the time. You have your water pump right above it. So if that goes bad, it will leak right on top of this and kind of short it out. And as you can see here, it is wet. There's a good chance this water pump is leaking, but hopefully this guy is still working. All right, Big Birth has been here with us many times on the initial turning over of the engine of an abandoned car. I think it's brought us some pretty good luck. The Red Firebird was locked up solid, but we were able to get the cylinders free with some fogging oil. Oh, but this is nice. Look at this, hardly any effort at all. This is turning beautifully. It's crunching a lot of leaves right now. <laughs> oh, this has been so long. Look at the belt right there. <laughs> the belt is like rust color just from sitting in the same spot on these pulleys. Wow. Yeah, I'll turn this over a few more times. I want to get a sense of the compression as well, but it is kicking back at me. I'm feeling some good compression. This feels like a normal 350. I got all the plugs back in it, by the way. And it's turning beautifully. All right, cool. Look at this guy. Look at him. That's a different one than we saw before. This thing is infested. You gotta be kidding me. Dude, get out of here. Ugh. Look at this little guy. I'll name him T.A. T.A., you're gonna have to find a new home though, man. Get out of this car. Unbelievable, unbelievable. I left this thing outside for a few days. It's got peppermint all over it. Apparently that does not work at all because they, they seem to like the peppermint, I guess. Oh, all right, anyway, I've got gloves now. I know you guys have already commented about this, I'm sure. 
Um, but I've moved a lot of my stuff from my home garage to the shop, including gloves and everything. So anyway, I found some winter gloves. I'm gonna start wearing these. I don't think I have to worry about the mice biting my hands, but you never know, you never know. So anyway, let's do a battery. All right, so this thing has an old battery. I'm not even gonna try really to do anything with this because I took the battery out of my WS6 as a loner battery. So we'll swap these out. It is hard to work with gloves, all right? Look, the mice, they seem, they seem to be nice. I think we'll be okay, okay. Of course, you know the battery hold down is just completely rusted and broken. Yeah. All right, here is my Trans Am battery loaner program. Is this bigger? It should be the exact same battery. I guess the battery out of an LS car is bigger than an LT car, I don't know. This won't fit. The size difference there. So, all right, I didn't know that. So we'll just have to jump this one off, hope for the best. All right, so next up, I wanna disable the fuel system. So this is the fuse for the fuel injectors. I don't want it to start just yet because I just wanna crank the engine over and get the oil flowing. So we're forcing some power to it right now. You guys in here? I don't see anything yet, but we do have power here on the dash. Let's see if it'll crank over. I think I hear a fuel pump. Let's crank it over. It's really slow though. Very, very, very slow. And it could just be because that battery is shot even with the jumper on there. It's just not enough. So we gotta figure something out for that. Gotta get creative here. I could just run to the store and get a battery, but I don't even know if this engine's good. So we're gonna go this route. I don't recommend this at home. This isn't safe. Entertainment purposes only. All right guys, so we are gonna give it some more power with this. Uh, the TA battery, probably not the best battery also, so we'll give it some more juice. It's just spinning really slow right now. So we'll see what happens. Fire in the hole. I totally pulled the wrong fuse. <laughs> it's at the other end. It started though, it started. It sounded pretty good right there. I didn't want it to start though. I wanted to just crank it for probably like 15, 20 seconds to get the oil going, but it's gonna work. And it wasn't like ticking or knocking right away. So anyway, I pulled the correct fuse now for the fuel injectors. So it should not start. Uh, and I'm just gonna go ahead and keep turning it over. All right, so I've cranked the engine over a bunch of times and I've let the starter cool off also. It doesn't sound the best. It clicks right in the beginning and then starts to go. Um, so I don't wanna break the starter at this point, but uh, at this time, we're gonna go ahead and put the fuses back in and fire it up. I should probably open the door because we don't really know what's gonna come out of that exhaust pipe. Might be an animal. All right, so this was the wrong one and this is the right one. All right, so we're gonna clean up some of the leaves here. So if we get this engine hot, I don't want any fire hazards. This is really dry stuff. So I probably should have done this before, but I was too excited. Wanted to get it started. This injector is leaking right here. Yeah, That's another reason why it's good to vacuum up all these leaves. The leaves by themselves might not light on fire, but if they're doused in fuel, they could. And this injector seems to be leaking like through the harness. It's very weird. Okay. Oh my gosh, yeah, this thing is totally wet. And I wonder if this injector is just physically cracked at this point. Okay, so I just plugged that in temporarily. Max is gonna turn the ignition on. I just wanna see what's going on with this injector. Go ahead and turn it to position two. Oh yeah, it's filling up with fuel. There's gotta be like an internal crack or something on this fuel injector. So I'm gonna have to leave it unplugged right now. Still might leak a little bit. And I'm gonna finish cleaning this up as well. We can still see if the engine runs. It just won't be running on all cylinders. So I came back here to get the air hose so I can start cleaning up that area by the fuel injector. And I think we can already see what's gonna come out of the exhaust pipe. The mice have to be living in the exhaust system as well. This must have shot out there. It wasn't there before. Little TA or Stuart Little or whoever you are, you might want to get out of the pipes now. All right, I want to clean this area really nice. All right, we got this area cleaned up pretty well. 
It may leak a little bit of fuel. I'll keep my eyes on it. But at least we can hear this engine start, so let's do that. All right, here we go. All right, it's running. We know for sure it's running on seven cylinders. I have a feeling it's running on more like four or five cylinders. It's running really bad. But the good thing is there's no knocking. It actually sounds pretty good. It's, as weird as that sounds right now, <laughs> this engine running terribly isn't necessarily the end of the world. We know it's probably fuel or ignition related, but the engine itself sounds great. And it's really not smoking that bad. We probably lost a few mice, but there's no oil puffing out of the tailpipe or anything. This is pretty good. All right, so we got check engine light flashing, of course. This thing is running so bad. But if that oil pressure gauge works, we have really good oil pressure and it's idling at about 500 RPM right now. I'll give it a tiny little bit of gas. Oh yeah. All right, let's shut her down. A little smoke back here, but it just honestly smells like old fuel is burning. It's really nothing major. And we've blown out a lot of the mice insulation from the exhaust. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. So we let this thing warm up a little bit and it actually is running much better. I think it might be closer to seven cylinders because we unplugged the injector. Old fuel, not too bad, all things considered. But right now we know the engine is pretty good. The oil pressure is nice. I want to see if it'll go into gear. So I'm going to start it back up. We'll see if we can spin these back tires. All right, that's reverse. And there's drive. All right, I couldn't stop it with the brakes. I must have blown out a brake line. So I just popped it into neutral and killed the engine. Otherwise we'd mess up the parking pole and the transmission, but it goes into reverse. It goes into drive. I'd like to drive the car, but we have a fuel leak. We have mice in the car. Uh, the brakes probably don't work. There's a lot going against us for driving this car, but I really just wanted to see if I could get it started. And we did, and I think this engine's good. It sounds great, other than, you know, misfiring. Oh uh, yeah, there is our brake fluid right there. Let's go investigate which line was the weakest link. You know what, I thought this was a little wet, but here is the line that blew up. And if we fixed that, you better believe that every other brake line would blow up right after. This thing needs all new brake lines, all new fuel lines. Look at the fuel filter. It is amazing that this thing runs as well as it does. Welcome to Chicago. This is beautiful. All right, it moved. It moved. <laughs> I think we're just gonna take it for a ride, a little drive, just like up and down my street. I think it'll be okay. But will this guy run? without jumper packs and batteries connected to it. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. There you go. It actually runs really nice now. It's cleaning up for sure. This is great. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tape up this positive terminal right here. We don't want any issues. All right. That's, uh, that's totally safe. I tapped this injector a little bit and it's not leaking anymore. It's kind of weird. Some internal is going on, um, but I plugged it in and it's not leaking at all. So that's a good sign. And the engine's running a lot better now. I'm going to go ahead and back this thing out of the driveway. I have to do that anyway. And this is going to help when I need to get this car towed inevitably uh, that it runs. So let's back it out and go on a first drive. Yep. It's got a little miss. The hood's doing a little dance. It's a shaker hood. It's an LT1 shaker hood. You know what? T-tops are coming off for this. I need the fresh air. Ooh, I should go see if Mel's home. Woo! Yeah, that hose clamp repair for the exhaust, not doing too well right now.
Yes, it is really nasty in here if you guys are wondering. But with the T-tops off, it's not that bad. Hang on, let me get some air. Hey, we got some brakes. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's bad. Oh, it's nasty. We're going to Mel's house. We got to see if he's home. All right, so I got Max with me. He's going to take a ride. I'm going to vacuum this side for him because it's the worst. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, we're done, we're done. Oh my We cannot disturb that. All right, Max, there you go. I yeah. can walk. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, it's, it's, it's nice. I just cleaned it. Okay, they're nice, they're very nice mice. And uh, here, we just, you know, just in case. Yeah. <laughs> Calling Mel to see if he's home right now. And by the way, Mel lives like a block away, so uh, I'm getting his voicemail. Let's go ring his doorbell. Guys, this thing is totally clearing up. It's so quiet. The engine is in great condition. I mean, it definitely needs a set of injectors. That is for sure. Old 90s GM injectors. They don't last very long anyway. But uh, but yeah, we got a, we got an LT1 car. So we have no battery in the car right now. So everything's kind of freaking out. Not the best thing in the world to do to your alternator. Look at the cluster. Yeah, we are not at 5,000 RPM. <laughs> this thing is flipping out every light on the dash. I gotta say, if only I could go back in time and show seventh grade Alex what I'm doing right now, I don't know what would have happened. It would have changed the course of history for me. I would have been like, no, I'm good. I don't really like F-Bodies anymore after seeing this. This is horrible. This is the car that inspired me. And it's such a shame that it's in this condition right now, but I'm driving it, finally. It only took me like 25 years to finally take this thing for a ride. But I swear, when I first saw this car, it was mint. Here we are. Okay, not bad. Let's go ring his doorbell. He's probably at work. Nothing. Uh, nothing. Guys, I'll post up a short on YouTube or on Instagram at Legit Street Cars. One of these days, I'm gonna drive this over here before I give the car away uh, and we'll get Mel's reaction, but he's at work. Oh, that's all the way down. This is brutal. This car is not safe. But it shifts. We have a good engine. We have a good transmission. Honestly, right there, I mean, I paid 1500 bucks for the car. Probably paid a little bit too much. But with a good engine and trans and all these good parts, this is a good part-out car. If I wanted to spend the time to part it all out, I could definitely make my money back and some. But uh, I think this car would be much better served, or this engine more specifically, be much better served just giving it to uh, someone, someone who needs an engine. Oh, it's got its power back. Not gonna do that around here, but it's running really good now. We could do a burnout before it had nothing. Oh yeah. This thing's back, man. I think it's running on eight cylinders right now. It's totally good. Look at the tech. <laughs> it shifts great though, honestly. The transmission is perfect. are kind of working we're missing a couple but it's okay all right well it died luckily we're like a quarter block away from my house and we got a jumper pack so let's see if this is enough to do it we needed a jumper pack and the battery before but maybe we'll get lucky how's this engine doing look at the fuel injector is bone dry nothing so i don't know what happened there but it's not leaking at all anymore uh, it doesn't even burn any oil. Like there's nothing burning off. Everything smells really good. Probably killed a few animals, but other than that, it's fine. This thing runs like a top, even with the old fuel. I'm clamping this to the tiny amount of exposed wiring that there is on that positive cable. Again, don't do this at home, people. Entertainment purposes only. No, it's not happening. Ah, that stinks. 
Aren't you glad you came over today, Max? Yeah. Yeah. This thing's easy. It's easy to push. Okay, I gotta run it now. Oh, jeez. We're gonna wreck this thing. <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay. All right, I got Max pushing. I'm steering. These F-bodies are not that bad to push, let me tell you. Good job, Max. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to get it running eventually anyway, but it's easier to push it. I'm experienced at pushing this TA at this point. It's not bad. Although getting it up the driveway with the E55 there is gonna be a challenge. I just need to get this in my driveway, so we're gonna do the American thing and just give it as much power as possible. I've seen it here first, people. A battery sitting on the concrete with two jumper packs connected to it and no battery in the car. All right, looks like we're dead in the water right now. Um, but I think this is a good time to end this video. Uh, I messaged Mel, the guy that I bought the car from, and he's gone for a couple of days. I didn't tell him anything though. I just wondered if he was home because I want to surprise him uh, with this car. And uh, the kid that blew up his Firebird engine, he hasn't emailed me back yet. Maybe he will see this video, email me back. So in the next video, we may be driving by Mel's house. Actually, we're definitely doing that. We might be giving this car away uh, to a youngster in need of an engine and maybe something else. I'm wondering if I should bring this thing to CarMax just to see what it's worth, if they would offer me anything. It is a very hot used car market right now after all. <laughs> so with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the revival of this LT1 engine. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, share the video. This airplane is gonna ruin my outro, but I don't care. Subscribe if you're new and most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.